everyone, it's Caitlin Cahill, The Geek You Need. Today I'm going to show you how to make these trendy letters that are partially a pattern, for example here a leopard pattern, and partially a solid color. And in fact, each letter can be its own individual color. So in order to do this, we're going to be using layer masks. So this can be done in any program that has a layer mask option, such as Procreate and Affinity. I'm going to be using Photoshop. One of the techniques also requires a clipping mask, which can also be done in Photoshop, Procreate, um, Affinity, and any other program that has a clipping mask. So let's get started. So to do this technique, you're going to need two layers. The top layer should have your leopard pattern, and the bottom layer should have the colors of the letter that you want to show where their leopard pattern will not be. Now there's two different ways you can add the leopard pattern to a text. You can either use a clipping mask, which will work in programs such as Procreate and Affinity, as well as Photoshop, or you can use Photoshop's repeating pattern option. I'm going to show you both ways how to do it. Just know that you'll need one layer with your leopard pattern and one layer with your color. So first, let's add my text. So to do this, I'll select my text tool, which is this T icon in the toolbar, and add my text to the layer. Now the quickest way to add any sort of pattern over your text is to use a clipping mask. So to do that, I'm going to need to add the pattern on a new layer. You can create a new layer and copy and paste. In Photoshop, I like to use the File, Place Linked option. From here, you'll select the image that, in this case, our leopard pattern. And make sure to resize your pattern so that it covers the text completely. Now you can see the downside of this is you have to have a really large image. You can see there's a little bit, the pixelation will get a little bit better, um, but as you can see, this file is not natively big enough to cover the text. So that's why I'll show you another way to do it. So it's a little blurry because I had enlarged the file size. But you put your pattern on top, and then you'll right click on that layer and select Create Clipping Mask. So now, this layer will only show on the pixels from the layer below, so in this case, the text. Now in order to make it easier for me to apply just part of this to the layer below, I'm going to merge the leopard pattern down with my text layer, but first I'm going to make a copy, and then I'm going to select the top two, and you can, in Photoshop you can do Command E or Control E to merge them down, you can also go to your layer menu and do merge layers. So now you can see it's a static image. So you, the downside is you can't edit the text anymore once you've merged the layers. So let me show you the second way to do it, which allows you to continue editing text if necessary. So I'm starting again with my text layer. This time I'm going to apply a pattern overlay with a seamless pattern. Now you can design seamless patterns yourself. There's lots of tutorials on how to make repeating patterns. You can also download them from a variety of websites and I'll link some of my favorites in the description. Just make sure that if you're gonna be selling products that you make sure to buy a pattern that is licensed for commercial use. So in this case, often you'll get a pattern, but it's just one tile of the seamless pattern. It's not the actual pattern file format that you can import into Photoshop. So in this case, I have a JPEG. To make it a pattern, I need to begin by going to Select All, or using the keyboard shortcut Command A on a Mac or Control A on a PC, and then go to Edit, Define Pattern. So now this pattern is ready to use. So now back on the file where I'm editing my letters, I'll double click on my text layer to open up the layer styles dialog and I'll check the pattern overlay option. So now you can see it's automatically selected the last pattern that I made, but you can also click the drop down arrow next to the pattern to select other patterns that either come with Photoshop or that you've imported. 
Now if you buy a pattern that's an actual pattern file format, you can use this little gear icon here and then import the pattern file if it actually gives you the pattern file format. Now again, the benefit of this is that I can change the size of the seamless pattern on depending on which how it looks on the letters. And so I'm not stuck with whatever the single image file is. So I can make them a little bigger, a little smaller, and then click OK. So now that I have my layer with the leopard pattern on it, I'm going to make a copy of this layer by doing Command J or Control J. And I want this top layer to keep the pattern on, but I don't want the bottom layer to have a pattern, so I'm going to turn off the pattern for that layer. So now if I turn off this top layer, you can see it's just the solid color below. So now let's add our colors to the letters. So back to our text tool, I'm going to select each letter and give it a different color. Now you'll notice because my document is in CMYK, when I get this little exclamation point here, it's warning me that the color that I have selected is not within the CMYK color space. And so if I printed this color, it would actually appear much more muted than it does on my screen. So instead, I'm going to click that box and it's going to give me a color that's the closest to that color but within the CMYK color range, which will print much more accurate than one that is not within the range. So now I have each individual color. I'm going to turn my leopard layer back on. So now I'm going to use what's called a layer mask, which is different than the clipping mask, in order to show only parts of the leopard pattern on the letters below. I'm going to use this, the rectangular marquee or select tool, to select just the parts that I want to show through with the leopard. Now to do more than one selection at once, I'm going to hold down the shift. And then with the, with the top layer selected, I'm going to click this layer mask button here. You can also do the layer menu, go to layer mask and reveal selection. So now you can see it's added a mask. So all the pieces that I selected are in white, which means they will show and everything else was put to black, which means it's masked out, which means you don't see it. And so now I have leopard on just those parts of the letter. Now if I want to do more designing with this, I want to make sure that this leopard layer stays aligned with the bottom color layer. You can merge them together, but then that takes away your ability to edit them. And so what I'm going to do instead, you can either select both by holding shift and you can link them or what I actually prefer to do is group them. You can also use the shortcut command G on a Mac or control G on a PC. So now that they're grouped, if I select the group, I can move both layers together. I can also mask both layers together. So for example, if I want to add a distressed textures to these, I can click on the group click the layer option, go to my brushes and select one of my distressed brushes. Make sure that my ink color is set to black because anything that's black, remember, will be masked out. So now when I apply this to the mask of the group, you can see it applies it to both the leopard layer and the solid color layer together. So for example, on a t-shirt, because you can see if I turn off the background color that the 
those places are transparent, the color of the t-shirt will show through, giving it a nice vintage um, distressed texture. So there you go. Now you have a set of letters that are part patterned and part solid color. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if there's anything else you need to know to be successful on your KDP journey. Thank you.